Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. Hey, I just brought this in and put it on my bench here. Let's take a look at this guy. Now, this goes with the record player I was uh, fixing up just uh, a few videos ago. So, this is the receiver part. It's in a nice console, of course, and uh, looks really nice. It's in great shape. The console is. Speakers and all that look great. Everything looks fine. Uh, record player is working now. Uh, seems to be working good. So we're down to this, this guy here. So what I want to do today with them, at the very least, is take a really good close look at what we got here and consider what we think we should, we should be doing. Now, this is a, what I call a European style radio, or a German radio, I'm pretty sure, built in Germany. It may not have been, it may have been built somewhere else. From my eye, they all look, well, they all look really, really similar, European radios. Uh, one of the features they come with is this big panel of buttons. The big panel of buttons provides a whole pile of terminals inside this radio to uh, build the radio on. So I have all these terminals, there'll be parts all over them, and a lot of those terminals don't hook up to the actual, are not affected by the button position. And this makes these radios quite challenging to look at the schematic and then sort out what's going on in them. Another thing is that uh, they don't lack for parts. Uh, European radios are made with quite a few more parts than a comparable North American radio. Yeah, and that may mean when these were brand new, they worked better, sounded better, were better. I don't know if that, that's really the case. These have a wonderful sound when they're working well. Um, they come with a complicated string mechanism, many of them. This one doesn't look too bad. Uh, looks bad enough though. Uh, looks like a double double string system. It's got two two strings on it, so we don't want to break these strings. They look to be in great shape. So I don't have to worry about that. Some of these radios come with fuses and fuse linking parts. They're often up in this area. Sometimes they're in behind this panel here. Um, so let's see what we got here. So this is the output. Um, transformer I'm pretty sure these are the various outputs coming off of it European radios like to use a high voltage electrostatic speakers for tweeters so it's a very common thing that the output transformer has a high voltage output on it not like North American radios where the output is very low for a low impedance speaker so another evidence of that is uh, the kind of wire that's leaving the output uh, transformer. So this is a shielded wire here. This was headed for, I think, the left channel tweeter. And the right channel tweeter it was not hooked up up here. It's hooked up down here for some reason. And the uh, shielded wire is gone. I cut it away. Okay. Oh, wow. Half my brain cells came on. <laughs> hey. So what other general observations can we make? There's some weird thing here. What the heck is that weird thing? That's a really strange looking beast there. I got a coil. That looks like a capacitor. It looks like a variable capacitor. We'll take a close look with the close up camera in a minute. Let's we'll start off with this longer shot. In fact, I can make this a little, a little less long here. There. Uh, so, of course, as with all these things, you should always be looking for darkened, burned parts. Okay, another one, another thing about these beasts is they've got parts up on top, they've got parts underneath. This one's built with these uh, tube sockets that I, I think aren't the most reliable in the world. Um, big capacitor here, fuse. big this fuse is. It looks like a slow blow fuse in there. That's just a little odd. Often these radios have the wrong fuse. Hmm. Okay, don't want to come out. Okay, stay in. But the spring is pulled, so even though it's a time delay, there I can read it. Oh my gosh, I think that's a 10 amp. 
better take a closer look at this. Uh, I need my magnifier. Pretty sure I left it in another room. is T1. What is it? 6 slash 10 amps. So I'm going to interpret this that this fuse will hold in with 6 amps continuous on it, but 10 amps will pop it like that. I think that's what that means. In any case, this is gigantic. This is a gigantic fuse with a slow blow. I didn't think it's a tall or right fuse. Does it say on here? Maybe on the back panel it'll say what the proper fuse size is, so sort that out. I'll make sure the right size fuse is in when you're fooling around with these things. So there's a lot of light wires up around the antenna here, which people can reach in and <coughs> break them easily. So I'm just looking at them here to see something fishy about this one. So this is two wires that come up and they're twisted together in the air. That just doesn't seem like the kind of thing a radio manufacturer would do. So maybe this is supposed to be over here? I don't know. Very light wires though and things happen to them up here. People get them caught on tools and stuff like that if they're fooling around. It looked to me like this radio has never been extracted from the cabinet. I had a heck of a time getting it out. It was stuck after it took all the screws out. This thing was stuck solid. It was stuck on its flattened rubber grommets. It was like glued into the cabinet by those uh, uh, old uh, rubber mounts. So from here, I think it's a close-up camera deal. And uh, yeah, let's switch to the close-up camera. And, um, another thing I want to do uh, change the focus on the camera here. Just bear with me for a moment while I uh, while I do this. Wrong one. Wrong camera. I called up the uh, control box for the wrong camera. Here we go. I'll put it about like that. Let's take a closer look now and see if we can find some surprises in here. Okay, so I just gotta fix the focus a little more. I don't want it quite that close. There we go. We're just starting in one corner of the radio. And we're going to work our way around here. So one of the things that makes me not want to work on these radios is all the capacitors that are in here. There is just so many of them. Look at that one. This guy's popped his top here. So you can pretty much bet that every capacitor of this style is shot and so are the rest. What does shot mean? So a shot means uh, leaking in my book. That means it can't withstand DC uh, voltage very well anymore. Look at that. And so they leak a little bit of electricity unexpectedly. Look at this thing. This is a great big resistor up here. Guy signed it. Rosen, Rosenthal? Rosenthal. So proud of his resistor. Put his name right on it. So we're looking at the top of the output uh, transformer. Goodness knows this doesn't look right. It's barfing. It's barfing up its guts here. Look for any resistors that appear to be... Yeah, like look at this thing. So that, that's really fried. Um, 
you almost swear it's wire wound and you can see the wire windings in it. Okay, but I get fooled by these now and then. The resistors or other parts I think look terrible, turn out to be just fine value wise, but uh, not a good sign. And there's a connection here. Uh, I think I cut off. I took lots of photos of this whole arrangement here before I took it apart. You don't have to make paper notes anymore, you just take pictures. See, there's just capacitors tucked in everywhere. Look at that volume control in there. Isn't that a monster? I have a stock of these kinds of volume controls. That's a resistor capacitor connection and the connection's floating in there. So, the, so they are doing those kinds of things in this radio. What's this down here? Oh, it's just the end of a wire. So it looks like the terminal, the wires come out of the transformer like you would imagine, right up out of the windings, and they're brought up to this top terminal strip, and then they're ter terminal, uh, ter terminated here, and then connected on to on onwards. <laughs> onwards, connected onwards, they're connected onwards then. Okay, let's look at the... Uh... So this, there's a magic eye in this radio, this is the magic eye socket just in behind there where all these wires are going. And it looks like the uh, same voltage that drives the light bulb is driving the heater, isn't it? No surprise. 6.3 volts probably. Here's this crazy thing here. Looks like something from another uh, planet, really. Alien technology I'm finding in here. Any little capacitor there. Okay, so now we're getting down to the main board with all the tubes on it. And again, oh boy. So I think I see a resistor that's defaced in there. There's another one. I'd have to point to it. Sometimes things look a lot different with my eyeball. So is this one. This one looks funny because here, because the uh, the yellow color strips don't look right. They they don't look right, but maybe they are. So I'm again just looking for places where maybe a part is burned open, like this one down in here doesn't look too healthy either. What am I gonna do about that thing? I'll get it way down there. Again, chances are it's fine. If you do find one that's really burned open, you're going to know it. So I'll just spin this around, get a little different angle on things. Oh boy. Now these are not built to be easy to work on, to get at parts. One thing they do with these is they build them in such a way that you don't have to disconnect all the wires like I did. You can swing these things out, leaving one end in. Like in this case, you would leave in the uh, end of the radio with the uh, output transformer. You can swing enough of the radio out of the cabinet that you can flip it over and work on it and leave all the wires connected. You know, with a little bit of fiddling, a little bit of finesse, you can get away with that. But of course, I, I've just taken it right out. That means I no longer have the electrostatic speakers handy. They're in the cabinet. It'll be a while before we get to turning this on. I'm turning this on today, I don't think. Not full of dust. number of adjustable things but it looks like they're all kind of glued in place big tuning capacitor how many sections on that thing two two section tuning capacitor here's the antenna see how the winding is on that antenna what they're trying to do there and you, you can't do it but they're trying to make the individual wires cross at right angles to each other so if it's a parallel wire, they try to space it a distance away by making the winding very open, if you like, or moving it a long distance. 
And then where it's crossing other wires, they try to make it cross at right angles, but you can't get to a right angle. Uh, that's to uh, affect uh, the uh, control the inductance and stuff, and capacitance that's coming out of this coil. Talking about capacitance, there's one now. <laughs> Look at that thing. Got black tarry stuff kind of coming out of the ends of it. Probably a lot of these inside. And this is just a tiny resistor, I think. So it doesn't look like it's taken a, a, a whack or anything. Kind of a weird thing up in there. There's a shark's teeth in here. Oh, it's coming up from this black cable here. Oh, look at that. It's a... Uh, um, what do you call it? A tra transmission line. Carefully done transmission line sort of carefully till you get to the end here. So that, that's almost certainly the FM antenna signal heading into the radio or, or or something like that. Bundles of wire. Yikes. What's this thing right here? This is a part. That's, that's either a capacitor or something. Goodness grief. It's bolted up tight to this panel, so I'm guessing that's some kind of resistor, and that's a heat being used as a heat sink. Ay, ay, ay. Okie dokie. Um, so, uh, does this work? I don't think anybody knows. I don't think the owner knows. I don't think he ever tried plugging it in. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. But so, of all the things I've seen here, the thing that, that worries me the most is this. This guy right here. It's on the output transformer. If this thing's getting hot, the transformer probably got hot. Does the transformer look blown? I don't know, you know, how can you tell? Unless it's blown sky high, you never know. So I doubt it though, I doubt it very much. Okay, uh, hey, we got another whole side to this thing to look at. This is only, this is only half the story here. Oops. The other half is underneath it. So I need to flip this guy over or stand him up on the end. Either way, it's very awkward on these radios. Standing it up on its end is very unstable. Very, very unstable. That'll do it, though. So we're gonna, and you're standing it up on the glass. It's, it's not, you know, not the best arrangement here. But that's what we're gonna do. Okay, pretty steady. Okay, what now? First, the long shot under here. So here's the button panel. This one's worse than most. Most button panels, the the terminals are facing upwards, all all in this area of the radio. This one, they're all facing out here. Yikes! Yikes! Oh my gosh! So you know, if this is the kind of radio you have set upon as your first project to restore, no, don't. That's what I would say. Don't make this your first radio. Go buy some little 5.2 uh, AM radio. Don't start with a beauty like this. Uh, it's really unnerving me looking at this thing. So that aside, it looks to be in great shape. I mean, no, nobody's been in here fiddling around. No, there's a, a very, very few parts in here. They're all up on top. Something there, a little resistor, but not not many parts down in here. Fuel over here. So okay, that's a good thing. Thank you for that. Let's let's do the uh, close up look at it and see what we can find. Don't we're gonna find anything here, but sometimes during these initial inspections, I find stuff uh, that you know basically. Thank God I found it before I started doing stuff. So we're looking right now at the bottom here. Now, what's this transformer here? This must be this must be the power transformer. I see the whole thing is in its own metal box. And uh, is there a 
big rectifier tube sitting on top of it. There's this. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be the... Uh, where's the power cord? Oh, it's way up here. Okay, a little bit of confusion about which ends which on this radio. So the power transformer is up under here, I'm pretty sure. Whoa, whoa, don't tip it over. This is part of it here. You're right in close to where the power comes into the radio. That's got to be one of them anyway. Huh. Maybe it's got two transformers in it. Maybe it's got like a 6.3 volt and a, a high voltage one. It's just a few terminals back here. I don't know what to make of that because there's this guy. This guy does not look like the kind of thing you'd be producing high voltage from. So again, it's got all these terminals up on the top here, except they're upside down, so it's kind of on the bottom now. Mount, it's, it's, it's done like an output transformer. Uh, let's see, we've got some, some wires coming from it and going right, right here. Right to that. What is that? i got to get the back of this radio. Okay, i got to run out to my garage, grab the back of the radio. side panel. Okay, another panel. <laughs> there we go. I guess studying the back panel is a good, good initial thing to do too. Okay, yeah, let's study this panel here. Corting made in West Germany. This receiver is provided with an interlock to prevent damaging, to prevent damage shock. Do not tamper or attempt to defeat it. Look, it's riveted right in, so they're not making it easy. Take a look in here, we see uh, 6 GW8 sticking out this way. That's the one down here. 6 BQ5 and a 6 AQ8. These are unusual tubes. 6 AJ8. These are all unusual tubes. They're not the usual. They're not the usual. 6 BQ5. I've got a lot of these. This set is equipped with multiplex jacks. So there was a period of time where radios like this were being sold with the capability of producing stereo. And so what you would do is you, you'd buy this receiver and then you'd buy the extra um, accessory device, the, the multiplexer or demultiplexer or demodulator, I guess is really what it should be called. And you'd plug it into the multiplex jacks. And then the signal would, maybe not in this unit, but in some units, the signal would then come out in stereo and be fed back into the amplifier separately. So you get stereo. But without that extra unit, no stereo happening, even though there's two speakers. Now, the good thing about uh, having two speakers and stereo is that there's a record player in there and the record player will produce stereo. So, so there is sense to doing it, but when the radio is playing, it's all mono unless you have that extra feature. And almost nobody has it, by the way. And I've almost never seen one. Serial number, I guess, pops through here. Long wave ferrite antenna off on. Is there a switch on the back of this? So there's a little rotating thing here. And which way is it? It's on. So long wave ferrite antenna, and I, they're talking about it, is the antenna up here, this guy here. 
So that's switched on. Uh, VHF, which is uh, another way of saying FM. FM is a VHF signal. Coming through here, you're hooking it up. They're even telling you, a 240 ohm speaker, um, antenna type connection. You tend to think that this is going to be a 75 ohms, a 75 ohm dipole or something like that. So There's a built-in antenna that plugs in here that's back in the cabinet. There's a ground connection. Stereo pickup. So this is connected to a turntable, and uh, I don't, I don't remember. Maybe it was. Maybe it was plugged in here. It was plugged in there. Don't remember. Stereo tape recorder. So again, if you can send it two channels, it'll produce two channels in the speakers, but it won't develop two channels on FM. Speaker terminals, channel left, channel right. Before removing back, disconnect mains plug, exclamation mark, for 117 volt 60 cycle only, 60 watts. Keep in a dry place. <laughs> With an exclamation mark after it. Keep in a dry place. Well, you know, something like this obviously is headed for somebody's home. I mean, what? <laughs> don't put it in your uh, washroom. So this appears to have never been fiddled with. Back panel is reinforced with something. Hmm. A lot of radios are missing their back panels. And this is not looking the most healthy arrangement here. Ooh, <laughs> we'll pass on using that when the time comes. Okay, what's the bottom line after reviewing this? Uh, extremely typical of these radios. Um, contains some issues that I'd rather just leave in it. I, frankly, I'm not, I'm not interested in trying, and neither is the owner, I'm sure, interested in trying to restore this thing to perfect operation. So, uh, now these are some uh, well you know, I would normally think these are rectifiers up here, and they quite likely are. Just of a sort I've never seen before. Yeah, very suspicious of a rectifier, though. It's got four wires coming to it. Uh, it's mounted out here where you can get some uh, cooling from the chassis. It's right near this transformer that I suspect is the power transformer. And take a look at this now. How come this is on an angle compared to the rest of the radio? Why do they mount this on an angle? It's, it's either, you know, just to fit it in, literally to fit it in, but I doubt that because that's what engineers do is they make everything fit in. Why in an angle like that? So a lot of these are on this angle. An angle of that sort. So I don't know if this is some kind of uh, <laughs> a radio thing. You put it on an angle for, I don't know, less interaction with other parts. I have no idea. Not that it really matters. Okay. Uh, oh, oh view in there. Just following the wires from the fuse there a little bit. So the thing about these is they can be of a sort that is actually risky to, to, to retain. Uh, it can be a, a uh, oh for crying out loud, I can't, a selenium. It can be made of selenium. It kind of looks like a you know, because of the bulk of it and the shape of it, it looks like a selenium rectifier. Um, my understanding is that when the, these guys get old, they start getting hot, they start dropping more and more voltage, building up more and more heat, till one day they catch fire and then they produce an acrid smoke, which I have heard literally makes your house unlivable for a long time. Um, so it's not something you want to have burn up in your house. That's that's the bottom line. I think most most guys are changing these out right away. I'm not jumping at them just yet. 
Okay, uh, hey, what about throwing all the controls, all the knobs? We haven't, we haven't done that. Make sure everything turns a little bit. What are we turning here? Oh, we're moving. Should we move in the FM pointer here? Where is it? Oh, there it is, just really hard to see. So this outer dial is FM. Inner dial is turning this pointer here. So this is an interesting uh, thing about, about these later radios. A lot of these radios are designed so one knob does all the tuning, but there's still two separate tuners. And as you switch between FM and short wave or whatever, you're actually mechanically changing the connection of this knob to a different place. So in one setting, it's connected to one tuner, if you like, and in another setting, it mechanically connects to another tuner. The beauty of that is, with one knob, you can set the FM, then switch to AM, set the AM, but when you switch back to FM, it's still tuned where it was. You haven't untuned the FM to get, so you can have kind of like two things tuned in it, kind of like at once, or you can switch between them. So that involves a fair bit of mechanisms and stuff like that. In this case, what they've done is to heck with all that stuff. Let's just have two separate knobs. That's actually a better solution in my mind. So, you know, one knob you set FM, the other, the other one you set AM and shortwave. I think that's a better solution myself. Some of these radios have steerable antennas, but th this one's definitely not steering anywhere. So, Either loose or they or either if this is one knob it usually is one solid plastic knob that looks like two it's a faker this is actually two knobs and I see the control back there <laughs> uh, hard to say and what does it say base travel So base, base and trouble are here, in fact, on these thumb wheels. Another thing about European radios is the radio engineers were nuts about tone control. In many, many radios, they have adjustable tone control like we're all so common, or we're all so, so used to, but then they'll also have additional buttons, and the buttons will have crazy names on them, like uh, brass or uh, woodwind or something or voice or something like that and it's just a preset tonal condition that the engineers thought you might appreciate if you listen to it that way for certain kinds of programming this one has a button called music off phono tape pointing at two buttons Long wave, medium wave, short wave. So what are they calling long wave here? Long wave, here's long wave. And, again, and then the frequencies are backwards on a European radio quite often because they, they tend to think about meters in the old days and frequency goes the other direction. So you see the high end is here and the low end is there, which is backwards. So 150, so starting at 150 kilohertz, going up to 340 that's a long way for sure 340 then it skips I'm sure to the bottom of the medium wave 520 actually go down to 510 here I think up to 1600 so the standard AM broadcast uh, you know this was made for North America because I can skip to the FM and see that the FM goes from 88 to 108 in Europe the FM band isn't as, isn't as large it, I think it starts at 88, stops up here. It, it doesn't doesn't cover the same amount anyway. So now they've they've boxed in each band, box, 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 box. So the boxes are all different sizes, so it's not grabbing my eye very well. Short wave is here, and it shows it uh, 18 down to six. So that's 
that's covering pretty much everything you'd ever want to hear these days. Uh, there's not much happening up above 15 megahertz uh, because of the condition of the sun. So, so this would be fine as a shortwave radio receiver. So, and there's no there's no fine in course, but that's that's a pretty pretty broad piece to tune across. So, um, so this radio can do three things, four things. Uh, play a record, that's really important. Play AM radio, you know, that's moderately important. Play FM, that's really important these days. People want to listen to FM. Play shortwave, that's sort of important because uh, people get a kick out of it. Well, I don't think there's too many people getting their news off shortwave in North America these days. But nevertheless, so uh, what I'm saying is, if this thing turns out to work only on AM, that's bad. We got to get it to work at least only on playing records. That's that's the minimum thing it's got to be able to do. Playing AM's great because then you can demonstrate a little bit of radio. FM's great because you can listen to it, but it won't be in stereo. Now, how much does that really matter? And uh, now, what's what's this band spread? So. Zero in the middle, a hundred here and a hundred there. So they simply put in an index piece here. Um, so if you want it, because often you know, like look at the short wave dial, you can't tell what frequency you're on. I don't know how helpful this would really be. You could write down this number instead. I don't know how helpful that would be. Maybe what they really did was by putting this in. Now they've got a one, two, three, four, five. It looks like it's got a six, six bands on it. Is that what they did? The little sneakers. Dude, the bands are fake. I don't know. You gotta imagine the designer spent a lot of time on this front panel. This is what people are looking at. This is what they're gonna buy. And again, it's got all these old cities on it. This radio was looking at the other day, and half the cities I'd never even heard of. Lisboa, Horby, H-O-R-B-Y, Horby. Anybody live in Horby? Now most of them I recognize. Drodovich, Drodovich, Drodovich. Never heard of that. So it's kind of interesting looking at this stuff sometimes, and thinking, "Hey, what happened to those cities? Or are they still there?" And I just don't know about it. Okay, so now, what are we gonna do with this guy? Oh boy. That's a good question. Um, get a schematic. Find out what the story is on this one part back here. This may not be what it appears to be. So it looks like a capacitor, but it may not be. Um, yeah, get a schematic. Try to figure out what this part is. Figure out what to do about that. What does it mean? Think about uh, running this thing without all of its speakers, without its electrostatic speakers. What would happen then? I maybe mean, have to bring the cabinet in here. Oh my God, I don't want to do that. Um, I, I don't think I can get too far without powering it up. Finding out what's going on. I'm certainly not shotgunning capacitors in here. I'm not going near that. Yeah, I think it really boils down to uh, check this this thing out here a little bit, and then uh, powering it up, seeing what happens. That's what's in store for me. Now, what else is in store for me is uh, the fantastic weather we've been having. Literally 10 days of perfect weather have gone by, something like that. Uh, it's coming to an end. Today's the last perfect day. Tomorrow it's raining again, and hot and humid and sticky. So I may be in the shop a little more during uh, the next few days. That'll give me a little time to find some information about this. Um, these things are not necessarily easy to find. Hope I can find something on it. Because uh, I didn't see, other than courting, I didn't see any name on anything. Just courting, courting, courting radio. Well, that's it.
And the great thing is, I just found my, my hat, which has been missing for so long. And for those of you who think, those of us in Canada, drink beer with funny names like, uh, I don't know, maybe a beaver tail beer. Well, we don't drink stuff like that. We, we drink beer like this. Moosehead, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm putting my hat on because I'm going outside. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll dig into this thing a little bit.